This is PhD podcast number three, and we are here in front of uh, our third interviewee's house. We are so excited to go in. I, she doesn't know, or he doesn't know, or she. You don't know who it is yet, so they don't know that we are here. But uh, we are gonna go in and surprise the person. Yeah, we are entering through the back door so we can surprise the person. Oh my god, I think they saw us. Okay, we are here and I think she might be sleeping. I don't know. Or he might be sleeping. I can't tell you who it is. I can't tell you the gender. Hi! Hi! Are you still filming? Yep. Yep. Yes, Uh, this is our third interviewee. Sophia Kim, woo! This is the this is the intro. Boo. I'll kiss you. Ready? All set. All good. All good. Focus. Good. Focus. Good. Yeah. You sure? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hello, everybody. This is PhD Podcast Number Three, and we are finally settled down after all that crazy stuff that began in the beginning. Um. We are here with Sophia Kim, the president of Help the Animals Live Club. That was a hard club to say. Um, that's not very creative. Shut up. <laughs> Whoa. Anyway, um, so Sophia, you are a junior. Yes. And can you please uh, introduce yourself very briefly? Um, my name is Sophia Kim. I, I'm a junior at Battlefield High School. And I have a dog named Mandu right here. And uh, my hobbies are swimming, sleeping, and eating food. And violin. And violin. Yes, I did some research on Sophia Kim, and she really likes to uh, play violin and be uh, very musical. Mm -hmm. She was born in April 30th. She goes to Battlefield High School. Right? Yes. And she was born in Korea, not in the United States. She moved from Korea when she was four. She started swimming at 10, and she also started uh, violin all around fourth grade. It's all on Facebook. And, um, okay, so let's talk about your, uh, sorry, let's talk about your hobbies. My hobbies. Did your hobbies develop to become one of your maybe future job, like your dream? No. no? I'm planning on quitting after high school. Because it's too, like, it takes up too much time. But do you still enjoy them right now? Yes. And tell me more about your swimming career. When did you start? How did it come to you? And any episodes? Um, I started swimming when I was in California. And then I had a really good coach. And he was really nice and all. And, like, I was really scared of the water. And that's why I think my mom made me, you know, swim. Mm-hmm. So, like, I started out by diving. And then I fell in the pool. And that wasn't fun, so ever since then I wanted to quit, but then I know that it'll help me in the future, so. Help you in the future, like what? Because Nathan Adrian will marry me if I know how to swim. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that, that was your real thought? No. What was your real thought? I won't get eaten by sharks. Since you lived in California, that's understandable, right? Yeah, I guess. And how long did you live in California? Um, I moved here when I was nine, so five years and uh i remember two years ago you were telling me how uh you miss california yeah what, what uh, you... i just miss my friends miss your friends mm-hmm. like long time friends yeah really long time friends uh what was who who was your best friend in uh california? her name was sue kim and she's probably not gonna watch this but i visited her um during the summer and we really like caught up and stuff and... uh hold on uh can you look at me There was a hair. Okay, so Sue Kim, um, she was, how, how long have you been her friend? Uh, I'm still her friend, so about, when we were like childhood friends, and I don't know if our parents knew each other when we were babies, but ever since I was four, I was friends with her. So ever since you moved to the United States, mm-hmm. did she move with you, or? I don't know. You don't know? Mm-hmm. Any, tell us any funny episodes, uh, a memorable episode that you had with Sue Kim. Um... Her dad bought us matching jackets and matching bicycles, like tricycles. So we like used to ride around at nighttime 
at night time. Yeah, because we're thugs. <laughs> How old were you? Four. No, not four. Like <laughs> <laughs> seven, eight. When, seven, I, eight. when I could actually ride a tricycle. <laughs> so around seven, eight, yeah. you had a matching cloak. Mm -hmm. Matching jacket. Ma matching jacket. So from seven, eight, uh, that was the most memorable moment. Mm -hmm. Just riding tricycle with your friend. Yeah. Okay, uh, and let's move to when you were nine. Nine was when you moved to the United at Virginia. Yeah. Right. Um, how was that moment for you? How was separating um, from your best friend? I didn't really know what was going on. My parents told me that I was coming back, so I told my teacher I was coming back, but I never came back. And who was your teacher? Uh, Miss Bachelor. Miss Bachelor. Mm -hmm. And I have a picture of her or with her. So she was pretty special in your mm -hmm. life too. She huh. bought me markers. She bought you markers, and did she teach you English or? You know, like it was like all. Yeah, but yeah. how how was she? Um, what kind of impact did she leave in your life? Um, she's the only like teacher that I remember. So I guess she had a very big impact on me. You just don't know. Yeah, sometimes when the impacts are mm -hmm. big, you just don't know what kind of impacts yeah. they had on you, and um. So you moved here when you were nine, nine, and that's a call disrupting us, but it doesn't really matter. Um, Sorry. We can go ahead and uh, talk about your... One, seven, zero. Three, nine, eight, seven, eight, one, seven, zero. It's my mom. Oh, okay. So, um, where were we? We were... You're your teacher, right? Yes. So you moved and... ha. Did you move to this house? Yeah. Oh, so you lived here since nine. I guess. Wow, and and I'm guessing that's when you met your another best friend. I guess. And Actually, she moved here a little bit later than I did. Okay, so you were pretty lonely when you mm -hmm. first moved here? No, I was friends with Jessica Javier. Jessica Javier, and where does she live? She lives around here? First gate. Oh, okay, so how did you get to meet her? Oh, uh, we were in the same class, I think, Miss Mo's class. Yeah. Okay, and um, she helped you adjust to yeah. the new environment and stuff. Mm -hmm. And were you ever bullied or no? No bullies. Mm -hmm. No. No. <laughs> I was. I don't think I was like known enough to be bullied. So you just had one or two friends, and they're yeah. pretty close to you. Mm -hmm. Um, and when did this love for animals start? When I got this dog. Actually, when I like was younger, when my mom would like drag me to the library and stuff, instead of reading books, I would read like animal books, because I thought I would always get like an animal, mm -hmm. but then I would always end up like killing them. Like I had a hamster, a parakeet, and like this dog, but I used to always read on animals, like how they reproduce and how, <laughs> like <laughs> what kind of food they eat, <laughs> yeah, like how much to feed them and how many times to feed them okay let's so um get, get, <laughs> so you said you how, what what kind of animals did you read about i read about like hamsters like the ones that i thought i would get like iguanas i think and geckos 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 okay so give us a simple knowledge a informational statement about geckos uh, when you like chop off their tails it like goes back and you know parakeets? Like when you like put like a blanket over them, they shut up. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Well, parakeet. why is that? Because they think that it's like dark and time to go to sleep, I think. Oh, I'm pretty sure. okay. Yeah. So that was, so around when you moved here, that's when you started to develop your love for animals. Yeah, because that's when I like used to go to the library a lot and I uh -huh. like wander to them. Uh-huh. So your mom had a very your mom was very passionate about your education and she def, she took you to the libraries to read to read and you read you you read still you read about animals, animals and you learned a, a, a lot about them what was that yeah I don't know what that was um but um <laughs> so when when did you get this cutie pie um, a year and a half ago a year and a half ago she's a year and a half years old which means she's about nine or ten this little cutie right here. Uh, I got her, I had swim practice that day, it was a Friday, and it was the weekend, a Friday before Memorial Day, which was on a Monday, and it was like raining, and it was thundering, and swim practice got cancelled, so I went home, 
And then all of a sudden, my brother was like, hey, come upstairs. I have something to show you. And then there was a puppy upstairs. So this was a gift from your brother. My dad. We we're talking to a Korean citizen here yes. um, that can't speak Korean, of course. According to Facebook, you got Facebook uh, when you're in middle school. I did. 2008. Okay. The first thing that was posted on your wall was Sophia Kim, August 30th, 2008. Bored! Boring. That was it, yeah, and, 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 and a couple of days later, on November 2000, no, 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 a couple of months later, Mine. on December 25th, on Christmas Day, oh. December 25th, a few hours from now, uh -huh. on December 25th, cool. 2008, yeah. she posted her second post saying Sophia Kim is bored. And, and a couple of months later, she, she's, not, she, she's not posting anything, she's not posting I anything, post and a couple of months later, she posts... Sophia Kim is bored. That's her third post. Um, and she, she's making a lot of friends on the way. Um, July 10, 2009, Jessica Javier and Sophia Kim are friends. So Joseph so Cho boring. and Sophia Kim are friends and everything. And then, after a year or so later, she posts... A year. Yeah, like, it's October now. And she says, Sophia Kim is bored. So, I, <laughs> based on your Facebook posts, you get bored a lot, and <laughs> is is that why you miss California? Were you ever not bored in California? No. Why, why are you why are you so bored? And it was on Christmas Day, on twenty fifth uh, of December. Why are you so bored? Um, uh, I don't know. I guess I don't think I had a phone then. <laughs> you didn't have a phone then. I didn't have a dog. And you didn't have a dog. No. And you didn't have a hamster. No. You didn't have a bird. No. You didn't have a okay. gecko. No. I never got a gecko. Oh, okay. And since we are in uh, your Facebook uh, topic, uh, I just wanted to ask you some, I guess, stuff about your pictures. And, and it's kind of, there's a lot of Helen in your picture. And, I'm guessing Helen is your best friend. Be best friend in Virginia. Yes. And she is currently your best best friend because Sue Kim's long forgotten. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about Helen. When did you meet Helen? Uh, she moved here when I was, I mean, we were in on December 4th grade or like near the fall of 4th grade before it snowed. Mm -hmm. Met her on the bus stop. Met on the bus stop, that is right. She met on the bus stop and you were talking about some food to her, like oh, yeah. nonstop? Yeah. <laughs> I did some research yeah. on her and that's what it showed up. Uh, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Uh, my first conversation to her was about what was her like favorite food and she said kalbi, which is um, meat. And I said myokuk, which is like seaweed soup. Wait, hold up. So you met her on the bus stop mm -hmm. and you were just like what's your favorite food well i said like hi and like are you new here and blah 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 but you know like the common, uh, common etiquette kind of stuff uh-huh oh god okay <laughs> just explain <laughs> to us what's happening um i don't really know i, I mean they're helen's so much whiter than i am this is not not just this picture but they're just like so many pictures that she is if you can zoom in on this Stop. I, I don't. It was from church camp. Can you see it? I, I mean, I just don't know. Okay, so church camp. Mm -hmm. So we're still in our freshman year, by the way. Can you? Can are, are you focused? That's this okay. Way. So so church. When this? When uh, you're Christian, right? Catholic. 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 Right. So when did Catholic uh, just ever became your thing? Young. Like I don't know. My mom just sent me to like church when I was in California. And like there were a lot of snails there, so instead of like going to mass, I would go and play with the snails. <laughs> How did Catholic uh, impact you in life? Um, I guess you know what you should do and shouldn't do more clearly if you have like a religious belief, because like there are boundaries to what you can cannot do, and like what's right and wrong and stuff. I guess, but I don't know. I don't really go to church anymore, but I. I still like consider myself Catholic and I still believe in God, but I just don't have the time. And were there any hardships that you had to overcome uh, as a Catholic to become a Catholic? Uh, any, anything that you, it, it just bothered you? Um, I guess I don't really go to church anymore because there were a lot of girls that were like 
like talk a lot. Oh, so a lot of gossip. Bad, in, yeah, in gossip. Church, yeah. And I thought that that wasn't like the true meaning of church, so I just didn't really go to that church. And then there's another church nearby, but but then again, I don't. You just don't have the time as a junior, uh, so the time is interfering with your mm-hmm. religion. And I never have a ride. You never have a ride. Okay. If I, yeah, if I want to go to the other church. Okay. So transitioning from middle school to uh, high school, how 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 was that? Oh, it was bad. It was bad. What yeah. do you mean? Like I didn't set my priorities straight. I would like consider more of my social life than my academic life, and I didn't know it would have that big of an impact on my GPA and so. I feel like I'm. St- Still trying to like bring it back up, but it's hard. To so start it off let's let's let let's send a message out to it. You could see, uh, look at that camera or that camera. It doesn't matter. Um, uh, <laughs> um, let's talk, let's send a message to your freshman uh, students. Sup, freshmen. Um, yeah. uh, what would you tell them if uh, they're? I would tell them that just focus on what you want to do. Like know what you want to do right now, and then really live up to your goal because if you really don't have a goal right now then you don't really feel like you have like a meaning i guess so just be like if your goal is to get all a's just make that your goal so who was your first boyfriend his name was joe cho joe cho and i'm guessing he's a korean yes obviously and um joe cho how how just describe him in a sentence a kind buff dancer a kind buff dancer and mm-hmm. he dancer as in like what kind of dance B-boys. so he b-boyed and um it, did he graduate yes and he's graduate when, when when did that happen last year last year okay and did you guys break up because of that no or, or, or you guys didn't break up yet we did break up and how long have you guys been together uh, i was like not too long it was like five months and like and and this had a ginormous humongous impact on your gpa not like us dating, but like I should have focused. Like I should have like set aside time for my studies and set aside time for him, but like it didn't work out. So it kind of went all towards uh, him. him. Yeah. yeah. But I can't blame him, you know. Yeah. What were the I don't know sweetest moment that you remember? He got me this. So this is a pillow pet. Okay, that your dog humps. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll put that aside, uh, just because, okay. So he was a sweet guy. Yes. And well, why did you guys break up then? Um, we had like different interests, I guess. Like he would focus his time on b-boy and I would focus my time with the girls and like, we just couldn't find time for each other, but then... So that created kind of trouble? Yeah, And I you guess. guys argued? Yeah. And then you, and, and that kind of became a cycle? Not a cycle, yeah. Yeah, it yeah. became a cycle, became and then you guys cycle. kept talking and talking, and then you guys would, you know, be like, "Oh, it's okay, I love you," and then you guys would argue about it again. Yeah. Oh, and you then, know me and so then, well. mm-hmm. and then at a certain point, you're, you're just like, you're "Okay, like, I'm, I'm done." done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jinx, you can't talk until I. My. You became a sophomore. Yes, of course. And <laughs> you didn't drop out or anything. Yeah, no, you I became a sophomore, better. and um. How was your soft the, the, the transitioning? Was it more smoother or? I became like. He was gone. Okay, joke. Jo- he was gone. Okay. So and I knew that my GPA was pretty dead, so I had to focus on what I thought was important and like what I would do with my life. So I brought my GPA up. Um, I joined a lot more clubs that I was interested in. Uh, I planned to make my own club. And then, yeah. So this was when your uh, love for animals really intensified. No, I really always liked animals. It's just that there should be an animal club in every school. So you you realized that not many people give attention to the animals, animals, and you wanted to kind of, kind of promote that cause. Yes. Okay, and just briefly describe about your club what, what do you guys do and how many members do you guys have and are you guys successful what we do in my club is um we go to animal shelters and animal adoptions and help out with puppies uh-huh. and full-grown animals mm-hmm. and animals that are like visually or like hearing like they need aids or like so they're impaired yes um like we help those animals we help them get adopted we help them find homes we help like animals just have a better life i guess if they were abused we would find them a loving home like just I guess the goal is to find them a home. Okay, and how many members do you guys have? About 10. So you like more members? 
Um, I don't really care because not a lot of organizations they accept large groups, so I guess ten is like perfect for now. And you guys have been effective in terms of going mm-hmm. towards your goal. Yeah, they're very committed. Okay, that's like very that. good. That's very good. Um, so your sophomore year, what was your favorite class of all time? Guarino. Uh, Spanish class, yes. and and why is that? Um, I liked her methods of teaching, mm-hmm. and then I really liked that class because I had friends in that class. Mm-hmm. And it was just an overall good class, educationally. And, and are you still in Spanish? Yes. So do you want to pursue something in Spanish? or? No. I can. I, I suck at Spanish. Oh, well, I think I think you were pretty good at it. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Um, I think and, you were the best. Thank you very much. And what was your worst, worst class? Like, you, you just don't want to even think about it. Uh, freshman class? Is that is just, it okay? No, sophomore. A sophomore. Oh, chemistry. Chemistry and who 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 did you? Souders. And how did that go for you? Ugh. What? I mean, I got an a, like I got an A in that class, but was it pre AP or just... yeah, pre AP? But mm, it was just hard to bring up that grade, you know. Okay, so like sophomore year is when you really start on those pre AP and AP classes, and how did you feel about them? I think they were the same as regular classes, to be honest. They weren't. They weren't. Pr- they weren't bad. Like bad as AP classes. Okay, so your sophomore year was just the okay year. Mm-hmm. And did you go to homecoming that year? No. And did you did you go to homecoming freshman year? Yes. With JoJo. No. With who? My friends. Your friends. Girlfriend. Oh, okay. So that's when the conflict started. No conflict. Between JoJo and you. Oh no no no! We didn't even know each other. Oh yeah. okay. I'm sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, we started um, like December. Okay yeah. okay. So transitioning from sophomore to junior year, and junior year is. The hardest year of out of all and i think i i personally think senior years but a lot of people say junior years yeah i so how, how is that for you i really need to bring my grades up and you you take a lot of ap classes i'm guessing i think i guess and what is your worst class right now ap biology and ap biology by taught by who deering mrs deering yes. okay um do you, do you have fun in that class? Or? I do. It's just that it's like mostly you have to self-study. I mean, she teaches a lot and she knows a lot, but like you can't learn that in like a day. And what would you do to bring your grades up? Study more. Study more. So I'm guessing you're not studying enough. effectively. Yeah. Enough or effectively? Enough. And do you get a lot of um, distractions? Mm-hmm. Like what? Computer. Computer. Um, so social media stuff? Mm, social media. Um. So do you like use I am or? Yeah, I'm on I am every night, and like and it's like, really distracting. And I should really like this like un like how do I undownload? Uh, What's the word for that? Uninstall. Un- uninstall. Uninstall them. Yeah, uninstall. So you them. you tell the fellow classmates and all other people that are procrastinating because of I am or social media, just uninstall just them. Just uninstall them. So you want them make to make un- your life better. I still need to do it, but it'll make your life better. Do you drive? Mm, permit. Permit. So, um, how is driving for you? Because there's a lot of stereotypes that Asian women are not good at driving, and I, I'm pretty sure you have certain points that you want to make. My mom doesn't let me drive. <laughs> so are you just like saying? I, I drive agreeing? sometimes, but like these days, she just doesn't let me okay. get out. So your junior year has been has been tough. Yes. So and- far. And with all the clubs and stuff, it's mm-hmm. been just chaotic, mm-hmm. and it has been interfering with your religion. Not necessarily. So I, I should you, devote myself more to. So you want to just devote yourself to everything. Mm-hmm. So now let's get into your like actual Facebook stuff. Mainly this picture Don't really, put that really, really made me wonder what you are doing. Yeah. Just don't know. Just if you can zoom into this picture, please. I just need to be clarified about what you were doing and why you were sleeping what does it look like i'm doing you're you're sleeping but what made you this tired maybe it was after swimming orchestra it was for orchestra we were going to um and when was this last year last year Mm -hmm. and you're going to senior like orchestra regionals orchestra thing Uh uh-huh and um i fell asleep you um, seem to enjoy taking funny pictures and mm-hmm. and you're a very gorgeous person. That's really awful. 
<laughs> no, like seriously, like there are some uh, beautiful people in this world, and you're one of them. Can you look at why? It's not awkward. I'm just telling you. Thank you. And and why do you enjoy to just take awkward pictures? Of myself? Yeah, like funny pictures. They make the picture more fun. It makes the memory more memorable. So okay, so that's why. Mm -hmm. All right, and do you just uh, admit that you're the one of the most beautiful? No, I don't. And you know, let a lot of boys like you. No, I don't know any boys that like me. Like uh, Brian Koch. Don't bring him. Let's talk about Brian Koch a little bit here. Uh, so, how about that boy? That boy. Yeah, I know he has a lot of interest in you, and 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 you haven't showed him any interest back. Was that is that because of Joseph Cho? No. Or mm -mm. Jo Cho? No. No. Why? Why then? Cause he's my best guy friend. You can't like your best friend. Really? Yeah, you can't. That's just. That's against the rules. You're gonna lose him. I so wouldn't want to lose mine, you know? Uh, we've discussed about her life. Just uh, last question: what, what do you want to improve in your senior life? Um, I would say don't procrastinate on your essays because I think that's killing all the seniors right now. Yeah, just don't do it. Just get it over with and think of it as like a ticket to your future college and out of your house. Mm -hmm. And and let's uh. Get a final message to uh, not your loved ones, not your family, but Brian Quach. Oh my god. <laughs> Brian Quach, you're my best friend and I'm lucky to have had you. My friend ever since 6th grade and being my lab partner for 5. Okay, so alright, so we have interviewed uh, Sophia Kim today and uh, it has been great. We've talked a lot about her life, like oh just gossip stuff and... Oh, yeah. and <laughs> The hot chocolate was great, the dog was great, and the, the pillow pet that the dog humps mm -hmm. was great, and uh, that's gone too. Okay, so all the batteries are dead, and oh, we did not know that the time has been just flying by like this. So Because I'm too funny. Yes, that's because Sophia Kim is too funny, and we will see you guys later in PhD Podcast 4. We will be interviewing somebody you know. Alright, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in. Okay.